Welcome back to the Coffin Lounge. Today, I have Daphne Reeder with me, who is the CEO at By Night Studios. Hi, Daphne. How are you? Uh, doing pretty good. Uh, tired, but you know what? It's fine. I feel like it's tis the season to be tired for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially post Halloween. I don't know if you're reeling from like post Halloween craziness, but I definitely am still. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of decorations that I had to take down. And I'm in an apartment. So we decorated heavily in our little spot. Are you doing, um, are you getting ready for the holidays? Are you going to put up a tree and stuff? If we normally do, we've got a, a cute little tree with every single ornament is either black or red or gothy in some form or fashion that. i just went over to uh five below they had a they had a four foot tree for five dollars and i was like Ooh. i'm good i can't it's a steal i'm gonna go get it i need some like holiday serotonin it's white so i bought a bunch of black ornaments and blue ornaments or no, black and silver ornaments Ooh. and blue lights so i figure if i want to switch the color up i can just put red lights in next time and it'll all look really different that's that's my plan <laughs> Do that. Yeah, do that. I, yeah, I'm excited. Um, so how how did you get started with By Night Studios? Oh, wow. Uh, I know. Um, we're just going to go right into the thick of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. Um, I pretty much got started with By Night Studios when I was approached by several people when I was at a convention. I'm assuming that I was either cosplaying or I was just being a nice little goth kid, as I was. and. I was asked, well, what kind of things do you like? Do you like Vampire? And I'm like, well, yeah, a lot. I mean, I've been playing Vampire the Masquerade since I was 18, and I'm 42 now. Right. So, yeah. And they brought me on to do, uh, originally, um, in-character pieces where you would interview. Well, my character would do interviews, and it's kind of like, um, oh, what's that one column where they like ask... So and so. Oh, like, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Like, dear Abby. Dear Abby, got it. That's and, wow. And you <laughs> I would ask, heard that forever. Right. I know. And you would ask, and you would ask Trinity, and she would give you like actual answers, but from a Malkavian standpoint. Cute. <laughs> and that got started, and then, but it never really kicked off because I never got props. But it's okay. Um, I started doing marketing for them and just went that direction. So I did a lot of marketing, networking, um, a lot of social media stuff. And then I was asked, hey, so what other things can you do? And I was like, well, uh, I have a bachelor's in marketing and international business. Uh, <laughs> I've done sociology. I've worked at an international company taking care of overseas contracts and they're like so you have leadership qualities yes yes i do and here's a plate of the things that i do and and now i'm here <laughs> enjoying life all right how long have you been at by night um i've been with by night studios i want to say let's see roughly six seven ish years okay all right, um, cool. Overall, I just became the CEO as of January of this year. Nice. Is it? Were you excited? I was. I may or may not have uh, run around my apartment screaming and then jumped on my husband. I feel for, so bad for that man. That's okay. Sometimes you know you just gotta let the excitement out. Um. So, how did you get started? I guess let's go back to the beginning. How did you get started LARPing? Ooh. Well, because like one thing led to the other, so now we're a CEO by night. But like it had yeah. had to have some beginnings. What what I, just made you decide at eighteen years old you're like I want to go do a vampire? Uh, well, it was my at the time boyfriend. He was in a vampire game, and he's like, "Hey, you like vampire stuff?" Yes, I am the gothy kid who likes the vampire stuff. Well, there's this game called Vampire the Masquerade. Okay, what do you do? And he's like, well, you get to make a character. I'm like, you got me there because I'm an actress. Go for it. And you get to be this character with other people who are being characters. And so I got super excited about that, was given a book. 
And then the um, storyteller was looking at me going, okay, so what would you like to play? And because I am me, I just went, I want to play this one. And my at the time boyfriend and the storyteller just look over and go, that's, that's a Malkavian. Mm-hmm. Why don't you try being a Toreador? And I said, nope, this is what I want. And I apparently made the game stop three different times where the ST went, pause. Really good Malkavian. I, okay, you, you win. You got this. <laughs> and then from there, I did um, Boffer LARPs with lovely foam weapons where I was a, a fae with elf ears and horns and colored contacts that's fun while also doing vampire tabletop and then someone said hey you want to you want to do vampire tabletop but live and yeah i was sold and so that now i have a a stable character that i just bring to different chronicles and i have an entire okay oh yeah i do have an entire wardrobe with her wig her contacts, her specific fangs, and everything is just right there. And yeah, I've I've always loved the interaction of LARPing. So tabletop was the start of it. And then from there, what more could a D&D nerd ask for? Right. It's just, it makes sense. So it, all the pieces fit together. That's amazing. Um, so uh, obviously Malkavian's your favorite clan. Do you have other favorites? My very, very close second would have to be La Sombra. And I'm actually playing in a Dark Ages game with After the Sunsets games as a La Sombra. Who became the Cardinal of the British Isles? Go me. (laughs) Took a while, but I got it. That's Um, a big deal. And everyone's like, how did you do that? I'm like, like a La Sombra. Like a true La Sombra. <laughs> That's fun. I, I typically love, like, I love Gangrel. They're my favorite. I just feel like I oh. connect with them so, <laughs> more than anything else. So, do you obviously, so you've been doing Vampire the Masquerade forever. How do you feel about the vampire video games? I've, I'm not going to lie. I've played, I think I played Bloodlines way early on. I'm more of the, like, do it kind of person, so right. I prefer the tabletop. I prefer the live over the games, but I have played the games, like the, one of them at least, and right. I enjoyed it, but I would always, if someone said, hey, um, we're going to do this LARP thing, okay, hang on, save game, and then I'm, like, gone. Right. So I'm definitely more of the, like, interactions with people kind of person. Got it. But, but are you <laughs> at least slightly excited that Bloodlines 2 is maybe, maybe going to happen? Because <laughs> I know we keep going up and down. It's like a roller coaster ride of emotions right now, and I'm stressed about it. <laughs> I just want them to finish it. I want them to finish it so bad. We got that trailer I- recently. Looks pretty cool. I am I actually when it does come out I will I will be that nerd. You have to. Messaging all of my friends going, "Are you playing it right now?" Okay, where where are you? What are you doing? Yeah, I that's, that'll be me. Go, oh, going back a little bit. I mean, we're still talking about I I love video games. Did you play Blood Hunt? I did not get to play Blood Hunt. It's a lot. It's not really a vampire <laughs> game. It's more like Mm-hmm. More like a battle royale, like PUBG or oh. something. Yeah, it's a little different. Not like a typical. I mean, if you like that, it's free. Go try it out. Like, holy, highly recommend. It's kind of fun, but I mean, it's also hard. It's very hard sometimes because <laughs> people are very difficult to play against. But if you have a good team, it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, I will add that to my list. It's fun. I mean, I don't know if you like shooters, but that's sometimes. All right. Plus, I do, it's, I do. It's, it's a shooter, but you get to play Vampire the Masquerade characters. Oh. Kind of. Sort of. Okay. It's, it's like, a, it's super fun. At least try it. It's free. It's free. It's like Vampire Steam. adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is, but it is a Vampire the Masquerade IP. 
is blood hunt okay so like it actually nice. is it's got you know all of the classes or all the fun uh, stuff yeah what was the original like how i guess my question is how did by night studios you probably don't have the all of the answers to this but how did they get kind of get started oh my goodness uh wow um I said, you probably don't have all the answers to this but like be was it just like hey we're all a larp and or that we want to do this in a specific format like how how wow um i would have to say you have to go back way way back to the mind's eye theater system of right. vtm live action role play which um, we actually, at our last event, Darkness Emergent, had Richard Dansky, who was one of the one of the brains behind the Mind's Eye Theater system. And I was fortunate enough to, hang, well, I hang out with him every now and then, and we talk all, all the time. But he was telling me about how, when they were doing their their gaming, and he was the holder of all the books. So he had this huge duffel bag with all the books and all the resources. And he was like, hey, God, there's got to be an easier way to do this. And they're like, okay, well, you should write something. <laughs> That's <laughs> so on you. Their, <laughs> so everyone put their minds together and they came up with a, a system that's, you don't have to bring your entire library of books. And then that's how Minds Eye Theater basically formed. And then from there, it kind of branched and flowered into what it is now, right. which is, I mean, it's pretty awesome. In fact, I would actually love to talk to some of the original writers and the creators to know more about the history of how By Night Studio was, was actually founded, because that would, that'd be really enriching and kind of interesting to know. For real. Like, that's, that's kind of cool. I love, I love hearing about all these, like, little tiny companies, like, uh, he, magic is a great magic gathering is a great example mm -hmm. of that it was such a little thing that was just invented by a guy and it, like <laughs> had its own little thing you know and then it just like exploded and i feel like a lot of these systems especially like with the the mind's eye system it has grown a lot in the last few years and oh yeah i feel like a lot of people that didn't know about it are finally starting to hear about it which is really cool there's like there's like vampire groups all over the U.S. now, and in I'm pretty sure there's a ton in Europe now, isn't there? Uh, there are. There are a lot in Europe. In fact, um, we are actually talking with some people who want to use the Mind's Eye Theater V5 system in Greece, in Switzerland, Germany, and I want to say France, but don't quote me on that one. So when i went to the embrace which was the kansas city game uh we actually oh, game. it was a very fun game i had never <laughs> done anything like that before it I was my you, first time I that. so oh, wait, i remember you saying that because you, you were at the table you're like this is my first time doing this and i'm like oh my gosh welcome yeah oh uh, so we did meet maybe like for a second i can't even remember it yeah, was such a it was it was super it brief was a, i just remember you saying that it was your first time and i just i was like one of one of us it was a very long emotional and draining <laughs> and exhausting evening of playing vampire but it was so cool like i hope they do it again because it was amazing basically um for those who listening that don't know anything of what i'm talking about the embrace was a game that was held in kansas city by a bunch of my friends and there was prince caligula who was threatening the masquerade and he was like played he was like this crazy guy and then the i think it was the ventru were trying to like overthrow the prince and it was yeah. such a crazy game the way it was set up inside of that building was so cool because there were like little tents for all of the clans and rooms for some of the the higher up clan like the more high-end clans and the way that it played out it was so fun. like i had never experienced anything like that before it was so cool um and i would love to do and it was like full production too they like, and i was i was actually surprised when i saw like the bruja mass death in front of me because i'm just standing there a little malkavian and then these 
three Bruja start attacking these other three Bruja the the, because they were terrified. Having a Bruja time, and then they're all just, you know, they were knocked gone. each other out. Was... <laughs> was like, and then they like, and to make matters worse about with the Bruja, <laughs> they were terrifying. They were carrying around bats with nails in it, and they were just, they were so scary. I was like, oh, oh my, my gosh, gosh so I'm so terrified of this poor. There are these people like I don't want anything to do with them. So, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a great game. And I hope I hope they at least do it once a year. Like that would be yeah. super cool because I think it went really well. There were a ton of people there. And I actually met some. I feel like I met some like lifelong friends there. So like yeah. a bunch of the people that were in my clan, I still talk to. We don't be together, but I still talk to them. And it's kind of cool because now they're all doing other LARPs and they're talking about cool like things going on and I was like I really wish I had time to join some of these they're so fun um but yeah I I'm not sure I'd be into buffer but like I love dialogue RP so like oh yeah parlor LARPing is is great for like the social interactions the political intrigues buffer LARP I've I mean it's honestly for all ages I have seen the youngest I saw was someone who brought their like eleven year old daughter, and wow, that girl was just smacking people in the back, calling damage, and then she would just be gone. And we're like, okay, the ninja. I don't know where she went. She she oh, was no. she was so little she could just sneak in there, get you, and then run away. That's and then cute. I think the oldest person that I saw at the Boffer Lark that I went to was, I think it was, it was a couple, and they were in their eighties. Whoa, really? They're yeah. just out there um, hitting each other with foam weapons? <laughs> yeah, and um, she was a spellcaster, so she had oh. packets of birdseed. And, who the arm. The arm. <laughs> because she was launching spell packets and calling, like, fire damage, and it would just shoot across the room, and I'm like, who did? Oh, she did that. Birdseed's <laughs> brilliant. I, I, I get older, ma'am. Like, she was That's, my hero. That sounds amazing. Like, that... I mean, I guess it's not, it's biodegradable bird seed. Yeah. And, and then we, then we pick feeds... up all the, we pick up the packets afterwards too. But like, like there's a big, like everyone collect it. That's super smart because it's not ruining the park or whatever where you're yeah. at. That's very cool. So then, so then it bursts open, like it's, it's actually, it's, it's wild bird seed. So it will feed the birds if the packets burst open. That's awesome. But, okay. I mean, that's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some crazy LARP stories. That's fun. I didn't even know that. Uh, or that, like, people people are so innovative when it comes to, like, <laughs> attacking each other with foam weapons. Oh, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> uh, people always say, well, it's like a, it's a form of catharsis, because if you're in your everyday life and everything gets stressful, you just need a way to release all that energy. It's an escape. And it's, it really is. And with instead of releasing that energy in a negative way where you're like yelling at somebody or like hitting something or hurting yourself, you're interacting with people. So you're still getting that social aspect. You're getting right. political intrigues. You're getting social intrigues. And then someone comes out and goes, all right, you see a monster with five arms and long fangs. <laughs> and then we just go attack the person who's pretending to be a monster. And it's like, it's great. That's fun. I, I, so during COVID, I kind of started a Grand Theft Auto 5M server. And uh, it sort of <laughs> absorbed me for a really long time, but it also helped me escape from the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. And it's been going for four years. I actually met my current partner. Well, I say current for my forever partner through it Aww. so like we role play together and we were friends for about a year and a half before we like finally eventually were like hey we should meet but um it has helped me just like mentally escape from the craziness of the world like i can go be yeah. just these random characters and just be in a different space you know, and I think yep. that's really important for people to have that escape because they don't normally get it on like a normal like I couldn't imagine going through my life without having some sort of like role play escape. Yeah, you know what I mean. And even people who are like, "Well, I've never role played before. How do I do this?" It's, I mean, once you get 
into the mindset, it it just kind of floats and you're just like, okay, what would my character do? Oh, well then let me speak as my character and then it just it just starts to happen. <laughs> Unless you're like me, like I have a character that I just completely disassociate. And I don't remember the things that she does. So then I hear other characters talking about my character. And I'm like, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> like, when did I do that? So, like, I have moments where I'm just like, just the one character. It's not any of the other ones. It's just her. <laughs> She's basically like the GTA version of a Malkavian, though, too. So, like, I, get, I mean, um, it makes sense. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. Um, so going back to By Night Studios, how do you think that since we're talking about like escape and, uh, you know, just just providing community and socialization, how do you think that By Night Studios has helped the greater vampire, the masquerade community? I feel like we've um, worked to pretty much bring people together because after COVID, everyone was just so splintered and separated. Um, schisms had risen up between groups. And what we're trying to do is like bring the community back together. And we've come up with different story ideas that will actually, oh, so you play in this game and you have friends playing in this game. Well, we have things that can affect this game and this game over here. So then you guys can actually meet up and do stuff together That's really and it's cool. just we're trying to bring the community more cohesive and just more a lot more co-op stuff it was and then with our um event darkness emergent it's in different cities hmm. so if you don't have the ability to play in in seattle for example you can play in chicago when we go there and bring your character from one game to the other and it's you still get the same experiences. You can even message like, um, I think we're going to have a Discord set up where you can go, okay, so I didn't get to go to this game, but behind the scenes, my character is doing X, Y, Z, as in like, like with your, your downtime stuff. Um, I believe we're going to handle it that way. So people, again, will still have that connection even if they didn't get to go. Right. That's interesting. Okay. So Darkness Emergent. I know you probably can't talk too much about it. When are we going to get a little bit more details on that? And the last Darkness Emergent that we had was in San Antonio. Um, it was during the Day of the Dead weekend, and it was so fun. The, it, like, the majority of the, pretty much the city, full-on support. They were like, oh, you guys are doing this? This is amazing. Ah, and the people that just would walk by and ask, like, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're being vampires. Oh my gosh, that it's so cool. And during Day of the Dead, wow. And that's fun. like absolutely loved it. And then um we did make an announcement at the end that we are looking at two different locations for our next one. Um it's either gonna be in Denver or Chicago. Okay. And I know what my vote is. Um I am super, super fingers crossed hoping for Chicago. Uh, if that one pans out, there's some really cool surprises Nice that I can't talk about, but I am like jittering with excitement about it. Well, I hope you get your, your, your wish. I'm sure a lot <laughs> of people will be really excited to just go and, and be part of that. I've heard so many cool stories about like big vampire events and stuff that I'm just like, man, I kind of want to go. Like it sounds yeah. cool, <laughs> especially after my embrace game like that was so cool um i do really want to do more stuff like that i i got started with role play when i was like super super young um <laughs> i used to play text-based rpgs like so did i the old old ones and that was like a role play game but it, like it was an individual one where you know it's like you type in hey i want to go left i want to go right whatever whatever but mm -hmm. I feel like that game, those games, helped me develop role play, like basic role play skills, and yeah. helped me learn how to write a little bit in a way that it sounds like my character was moving around. So then, mm -hmm. fast forward to AOL chat rooms because now I'm dating myself. I used oh, to go yeah, into please, please. AOL chat rooms and do text-based <laughs> RPGs in like taverns with like fantasy creatures and stuff like that. So like I was doing that for 
like the beginning of the internet you know i think irc yeah. is still a thing i don't know if it i don't think it oh, i know i'm no, no, really of... dating myself <laughs> have you ever heard of illusionary minds mm -mm. like um there was a there was a it was a text-based chat system called illusionary minds chat and you could have different rooms with different themes i actually ran four rp chat rooms on illusionary minds chat that's so fun like, a fantasy a vampire a sci-fi and then like just straight like lovecraftian horror that's really cool but like people they're they don't really have like i try to text space rpg as much as possible so like sometimes i do it on my discord um mm -hmm. like for like on our like the downtime between our characters like if i'm out somewhere or on vacation i can like write something up and add to my storyline you know so yeah. like i really like that stuff and i i don't think that a lot of people like i feel like fundamentally from a learning standpoint it's really important that you kind of do something like that because it actually helps you with your writing skills and helps you communicate a little bit better especially mm -hmm. when it comes to like games like that like vampire or whatever <laughs> um but yeah so i I think it's really cool what By Night Studios has been doing because I feel like it's bringing more people into the scene and helping kind of develop, I guess, really social situations that you wouldn't normally get, which that is yes. super cool. So what, um, how many groups do you... I guess you wouldn't know the actual number, but how many groups do you think there are across the United States of vampires? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I know um, it's kind of a random <laughs> that you know of. Like, do you have a count or is it just like, hey, I, I found another one today? It's, it's almost a combination of, hey, we have a count. Hey, guys, I found three more. Because <laughs> uh, you, like, you do have your, your clubs, but at the same time, you also have the groups that aren't part of the clubs. Right. Um, would and you say that they the are people... solitary vampires? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I've, I've seen people who are like in <laughs> groups that aren't part of the clubs of like 50, 60 plus people in just their little groups that they do. And I be, like we do have a, it's a lot. A, like a map where if it's like, hey, you want to plug your group, put, put it in this map. map. We'll put like a little pin in it. And like that way we can, everybody can see where you are. Oh goodness, we're there's got to be hundreds. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool though. I mean, so when you were at Embrace, you're just traveling around, kind of seeing all the games. Is that what was going on, or like how did you um, come to us? That's a good question. I was um, I was actually invited. Uh, I got the invitation of hey, so I know this is going to be a stretch, and like cause, you know you're a CEO and you're kind of busy, but would you like to come to embrace and i'm and then the response i got was oh my god that sounds amazing i would love to come <laughs> and then from there they it was you just like, started, like your world tour basically of going and checking yeah because um I, I i'm very open and a very friendly person very very social so i usually tell people hey if you've got a game and you message me and ask me if i would like to come i will totally come to your game um, I had there was one game in Greensboro, no Greenville, North Carolina. No Greensboro, it was in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I was. It was one of those. Hey, so it's like a kind of like a long shot. But would you want to come to our game? And would you want to be an NPC? Fun. The response I got was, "Oh my gosh, that sounds great! I'd totally help out." <laughs> and so, so basically, if if I can make it to someone's game and they want to have me be a, like a guest NPC or just play in their game, I will totally do it. Super cool. Well, that's and the funny fun. part was they made the announcement. They're like, hey, so we want to just say we have a very special guest here. This is Daphne, the CEO of By Night Studios. And the people that were there were like, oh, oh. I like, bet you, hi, guys. It totally <laughs> makes their day, though. And the fact that you're very accessible as a CEO I think speaks volumes for the company because a lot of companies that I've worked with in the past, the CEO is like not accessible. Not oh yeah. Accessible. And it's like that mysterious person behind the curtain and like right. you talk about them, but you don't talk to. Yeah. I and like talking like 
heart to hearts face to face i love that because you have boots on the ground too like you can see what is going on with the community and you are connected with yeah. them and i'm sure that everybody appreciates that because like i do that's really cool just the fact of the and matter like, is that you're going to these events just because you're invited is awesome yeah and then like um at, at conventions where we have like a booth i i work the booth like yeah. i will be there and be like hey how's it going how you doing and, like i will interact with every single person that i can and i don't even mention that i'm the ceo until they're like okay this was really nice talking to you and i'm like okay so guess what you can get a special prize for being here you get a high five from the ceo and they're like oh cool i'm like that's me and you're like <laughs> that was great <laughs> that's cute so do you like do you prefer going to events where you get to kind of participate do you like just kind of watching or do you like just like kind of going to conventions and sort of drawing people in like what's your favorite oh goodness for for me it's definitely the social interactions um so if, if i'm invited to someone's event i will i'll save up i'll hop a plane i'll get over there and do it and just get there and be like you know i'm just happy like to be there because i like seeing the fruits of what we work so hard for because we're like we're like working really hard making sure that we've got like quality stuff and then if seeing people actually enjoy it and seeing their faces and then because you know social me if they want to hug me and they, i'm like okay yeah i'll totally take hugs and like it just warms my heart to see how happy other people are with it so going back to a little bit to the the mind's eye theater Thing. can you explain a little bit for people who actually don't understand that system yet like just the bare bones of like how it works when you go to a vampire event oh goodness uh well the cool thing is we actually are working on something called lark light because uh, that came about when we had a friend of mine who wanted to get into playing vampire and they're like okay what book do i need and i'm like oh singular oh, book <laughs> all uh, of them <laughs> well, here's an entire library of books and then um, once you pick your clan here's an entire library for your clan and they're like well like just one book i'm like uh, yeah that's oh boy that's not a thing and so we were trying to explain like how to get into larping and they're like that sounds like a lot uh, mm -hmm. so um what we're working on is a system called LARP Light, where if you have never played Vampire the Masquerade, it makes it super easy. We have cards that have the different clans with just a quick little tagline about what the clan's about. Right. And each clan card has three abilities, like three different disciplines that your clan has. Once you pick your clan card, then there's a table with like all the disciplines that are listed. And there's two options per discipline and you read them and go, okay, I like this version of this discipline. I like this version of the second discipline. I like this version of the third discipline. Congrats, now you have a character. Easy. And yeah, which makes it super easy, like I said, for people who have never played before and it gets them into the idea of, okay, so this is what my concept is for the character overall. Here are the abilities I can do. And from here, I can expand my character and make it my own. Right. And you can have, again, two gangrel right next to each other. And because they've picked different abil like abilities from their disciplines, you can have two different styles of gangrel being played. And the storyline that we ran was, okay, you've picked your vampire, congrats. You've been freshly embraced and you don't know where anybody is. Right. Your sire's missing, all the hierarchy's gone, but you got a letter that says you need to go to this location where you've got two established vampires who are like, hey, so um, we don't know where all the elders went, <laughs> but we got to figure out what you guys are. Congrats on being a vampire, by the way. <laughs> and uh, figure out what kind of system you're going to have for your new city before we leave, because we got to do this in other cities. And we ran that um, at like just like um, just quick little like one offs. And the amount of people who were like, you know, that made it so much easier to figure out how to play. Now I want some books. 
And then it brings them into wanting the books and then playing in the bigger games because then they have their like their quote unquote starter character that they can now just expand and just develop over time. Progress on from there. Right. That's very cool. So um I mean that's awesome. At least now <laughs> you are bringing more people in and you're it's yeah. it's not so overwhelming. Like I think that's my problem with a lot of games just in general. They get yeah. extremely overwhelming and LARP is actually it's pretty um what's the word I'm looking for? It's not overwhelming. It's a, it's a little uh, you know, it's a little scary going and daunting daunting yeah so you know um so like trying to go into it you're like am i doing this right am i making sure that like the, i'm following mm -hmm. the rules like am i doing this <laughs> you know what i mean like, it's just so much information all at one time so i think that's brilliant that you're doing it that way because so many games are just really hard to get into just in general yeah there have been a couple of larps that i tried to get into and then they're like okay here's your really thick 80 pages of this is what you need to learn i'm like go home and do homework uh is there gonna be a, like a math test also <laughs> how many tests is there a test every chapter because <laughs> that actually the might next help thing I know, I'm, <laughs> I know the next thing i know i'm just like i'm gonna put this over here and i'm gonna put a pin in that and i'm gonna go do something else over here now Right, but yeah, it's like like making it more accessible and making it easier to get your feet wet. It's it changes the game. Oh, definitely, completely. Because then you are getting the joy that comes with the game, and not all of the paperwork. Yeah, because I am not a number twenty person. Yeah, <laughs> me either. That's why D and D to me, I have a love hate relationship <laughs> with D and D. Like, and Same. I've played Path Pathfinder as well, and. I want to enjoy it more. I want to be more involved in it, but I'm terrified of numbers. Like I am not a numbers girl at all. So like half the time, somebody that's like guiding me through or helping me is just doing my character. And I'm like, am I even playing this character? Am I doing this right? Like, you know, and then you see like things like critical role and you got all these other new, like cool things going on. And I'm just like, I play it right. I'm just not good at it. <laughs> like you know end of the day i'm like i'm very overwhelmed these numbers are stressing me out and like we have moved two feet because somebody over here is trying to talk to a tree and this other person is trying to steal stuff from this little goblin and this has gone on for 45 turns yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah so like, or then you've got like you know the murder hobo friends who are like i'm gonna go kill that guy what do they do i don't know but i'm gonna kill him and uh, i want their right. stuff yeah. you gotta make sure you know there's always i had a friend who we started a D, &D game with actually two friends these are these were two different <laughs> games one of them was a candle maker that's all he knew how to do was make candles <laughs> so like cool. his character was basically useless until it was dark and then he made candles and then he could like trade candles and that was like it okay and then there was another person who was an angel and he was like or an angelic character and he was obsessed with shaking things because he was paranoid that there was things inside of things so like he would go, we would go into a dungeon and there's curtains on the wall. He would go shake the curtains. He'd shake the rug. He'd shake the bed sheets. You know, like he would just shake everything. And I'm just like, we have been sitting wow. here for four turns so you could shake everything in this room. Why are you doing yep. this to us? So yeah, I, <laughs> I've played with some very interesting characters and I'm just like, it's one of those things where like you have to find a balance of not irritating the ever loving crap out of your friends. <laughs> But also making the character really fun. <laughs> like I made a, I had a path. I think I played a Kender, Night Stalker. Okay. And everyone's like, "Oh God, you're playing a Kender." Oh God, no. I'm like, no, I got this. It's been great. She made money for the group by making a recruitment video on how awesome it is to join the guard. <laughs> and by recruitment video, it was like a little puppet theater. Oh and she gosh. made little puppets. That's amazing. And she made the puppets. She made the puppets by um, borrowing fabric off of people's clothes, so they had like 
little shirt cut out of their clothes <laughs> no! or little pants cut out or their, their or their horse or sheep would have like an outline of like clothing missing that's funny. and she made little puppets and she put on the little puppet show about like how great it is to be in the guard and made like 500 gold and was like hey guys i made money and they're like how did you do that they made a puppet show on how great it is to be in the guard also whose belt is this and our <laughs> ranger's like how did you and his pants fall down and i'm like that's funny go. it's really fun so going back to monsters since we were talking <laughs> a little bit about monsters and things who let's let's talk not vampire for a second what Ooh, kind of okay. monsters do you like? And it can be from like any any IP, any sort of mythology. Like if you oh, had goodness. to go, this is my favorite. Which monster wow. is Wow. I know. That's a loaded wow. question because that's really hard. You can do top three. I always do this. I say one and then I always go top three because it always makes it easier, I think. Let's see. Um, well, I don't consider dragons monsters. So I can't say dragons, but I do love them. Um, I mean, they can't. They could be. Well, they're just misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, dragons are just they're misunderstood creatures. So I can't count them as monsters. I love them too much. But uh, anything Lovecraftian, I'm really big on multiple tentacle elder being. A, yeah, that's elder god creatures. Horrifics from the deep. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. that's my jam. I, I actually have, I think, fish people. Several works of Lovecraftian horror books. Yeah, those are pretty good. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, Cthulhu is pretty cool. I like I like fish people though. I feel like fish people are really misunderstood. Like, if we're gonna they go are. down the misunderstood, <laughs> I feel like monsters in general. I just made a post about this on my Facebook. Um, I feel like monsters in general are really misunderstood. And I feel like most yeah. of them were created because humans are terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's so it. Tracks. I've always been like a monster person. Like I've always loved monsters and connected with them because I just feel like so much more connected with them than people. Because they never wanted to be that way half the time. And people <laughs> have just made them become these things and i always just feel so bad for them because i'm like oh man like they were just trying to live their life and now they're a monster and now everybody hates them even more <laughs> like you know and what's, and what's really funny is that actually like harkens back to when i played hunter the reckoning my hunter character made friends with all of the supernaturals that's really cute. she was like she was like yeah i know this guy's a werewolf but like he he's the quarterback from the football team from my college and he's actually pretty nice. Right? Look that's, at him. That's a, like, Professor Lupin situation where you're like, he's cool, he's our teacher, but also he's a werewolf. We just kind of, you know, let him do his thing. <laughs> that's fine. Everything's fine. Right. I think, I think uh, I love, I love, vamp obviously I love vampires. We love vampires. We love werewolves. Um, But I feel like... I've been really getting into a lot more like lore lately. I've learned a little bit about <clears throat> some really interesting different cultures have so many we I kind of talk about this a little bit on my another podcast, but different cultures have such rich monsters. Like they're so cool. And yeah. monsters have dated back for centuries. Like people have always been like dragons are real and they find big bones and which were you know most of the time it's just dinosaurs, but like <laughs> At the end of the day, I think it's really cool that we as a species have always been like, there are these mythical p things out there that like are haunting us or that are in the woods or that, you know, happen when you die, they're undead. And I think that's just really cool that like universally we as a people yeah. have that lore. And a lot of things yeah. are really similar. Yeah, every, like every, I, I actually I've done paperwork on that before where I, I looked up lore on different cultures and the the things that are actually similar that cultures from like one end of the planet to the other end of the planet still share is just it's kind of crazy. mind boggling. Yeah. Yeah. Super I crazy. And I love cool. it. What are some <laughs> project, projects that you're currently working on? Do you have any current oh, projects here. that you can talk about? Uh, well, I am super uber nerd, 
Um, this year I learned how to do leather working. So nice. I've made water skins, which are basically water bottles that you can use for like your period piece larvae. Um, I learned how, so I learned how to wet mold and wet form the leather and then fill the inside with beeswax. So then you can actually use it to actually hold water. And I'm really excited. Um, I just have to do the beeswax. I made a, a corset that also has scale Whoa, work on it. That's beautiful. Wow, that's really I learned, that's gorgeous. I learned this year how to sew and wet mold leather that's awesome. to make a corset. I've actually, because I, I obviously I hate myself, I've made four corsets in the course I mean... of a year. Corsets are expensive, uh, so uh, you're on right? top of it. At least you can save that and, money. <laughs> and I have a lot of leather, so I, ha I have. I'm set. I can make corsets for like at least a couple hundred people. I have so much leather, and I also I'm the owner of an independent film company called Drake Media Films. I do horror, obviously, and sci-fi. Working on a vampire hunter series. Cool. And a really cool horror movie from the take of what kind of scary stories would vampires tell? So. Oh, fun. That's really fun. Yeah. Well, do you have. It's going like, to be. Do you have like release dates be, or ideas of when you expect oh, it yeah. to come out? Um, it's it's, it's going to be an anthology style movie. So the, it's an overarching idea of six people going to a christmas winter solstice yule party and they decide okay well let's tell scary stories while we're here at this party and the hostess makes the note that charles dickens wrote a christmas carol while he was attending a christmas party because christmas ghost stories actually used to be a tradition because that's where you get the idea of like the krampus and things like that it was scary stories being told during the season and so then it becomes a okay so what kind of scary stories would vampires tell and what kind of things would scare a vampire and i've come up with some crazy things and each little thing is going to be its own little mini movie within the anthology and i'm really excited for it uh we filmed a third of it so far. Um, so all like the overarching main part of them being at the party. And now I'm just film getting ready to film the little anthology pieces. I'm That's super really cool. excited. Well, congratulations. I'm looking forward to that. That sounds awesome. Um, there is a teaser trailer on my YouTube. Okay. I want to make sure to link to that. So it'll be in the description for anybody that is interested in seeing that. That sounds cool. Thank you for being on the show today. Oh, I had a, had a blast. <laughs> yeah, well, I love talking about monsters with people, though. Like, it's kind Same. of something I'm passionate about. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. I will make sure everybody knows where to follow you. If we have just somebody listening in their car to the podcast, where can people find you? Oh, goodness. I am. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, my TikTok is time for Trinity time the number four in trinity uh instagram is club daphne yeah uh do believe that my twitter is also club daphne um daphne reader on facebook feel free to friend me i i answer literally every message that people will send me thank you so much for being here today and uh we will see you on the next episode of the coffin lounge make sure you're listening and subscribed on youtube itunes Spotify. Actually, I'm fully syndicated almost everywhere now. So uh, hopefully we can get some more ears on this. Thank you all so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day.